15 million. That's nine times the population of Paris, twice the number of people that die from cancer annually worldwide. And unfortunately, that's how many people die from coronary artery disease every single year globally. Coronary artery disease is important to Lambert iGEM as the southeastern portion of the United States that we call home is a hot spot for CAD. Coronary artery disease is characterized by lipid or fat blockages that obstruct blood flow to vital organs, forcing the heart to work harder and consequently resulting in an increased probability of a heart attack. Current diagnostic tools include echocardiograms and angiograms that are not only expensive, but also not readily available at most primary care facilities. In fact, the University of Martinburg quantifies that nearly one third of all patients initially received a false negative diagnosis from their primary care physician. Optimization of CAD diagnosis at the primary care level would help combat this problem. So we propose CADLOC, a novel diagnostic tool that utilizes padlock probes to quantify microRNA biomarkers. This blood test-based system allows us to reach high levels of sensitivity while ensuring that we're staying affordable, giving us the potential to save millions of lives. So how did we get there? MicroRNAs are RNA sequences that are produced as a result of cell regulatory processes. We've talked to cardiologists who referred us to MicroRNAs 1 and 133A, which are both correlated with coronary artery disease, but more specifically to heart damage. Now, our initial vision was to do an at-home blood test. However, after talking to microRNA researchers, it was quickly evident that between the complexity and lack of available data, that a lab-based test would be much more promising. Furthermore, by preliminarily tailoring our kit towards researchers, we hope to increase the inclusivity of microRNA characterization. Due to the current novelty, as well as the high cost of detection for microRNAs, labs across the world are unable to aggregate sufficient data to look into the future clinical applications of microRNA. So Lambert iGEM wants to prioritize accuracy, affordability, and accessibility with our project. So Sahana, how did CADLOC become a reality? We wanted to create a system that was both accurate and sensitive in detecting coronary artery disease. So our team decided to pursue rolling circle amplification based biosensors for microRNA detection. Unlike current detection methods such as northern blotting, which is nonspecific, and reverse transcription qPCR, which utilizes expensive equipment, rolling circle amplification can detect and amplify extremely small concentrations of microRNA while also being a more affordable option. Now, to utilize rolling circle amplification, we use padlock probes, which are single-stranded DNA pieces of about 30 to 150 nucleotides in length that can identify a specific target sequence, in this case, our microRNA. The ends of the padlock, or the arms, are complementary to our target microRNA, and the middle sequence is corresponding to our fluorescent reporter mechanism. Now, rolling circle amplification has four steps, hybridization, ligation, amplification, and quantification. First, the microRNA binds to the complementary arms on the padlock probe, thus forming a DNA-RNA hybridization. During ligation, splint R ligase glues the arms of the padlock together, thus circularizing the probe. Phi-29 DNA polymerase utilizes this microRNA as a primer to amplify the padlock sequence, creating a continuous, extremely long strand known as our rolling circle product. And this product contains interspaced repeats of our middle sequence, which is complementary to our reporter mechanisms, both linear DNA probes and the split lettuce DNA fluorescent aptamer. Now, we utilize both of these reporter mechanisms so we could have multiple options for the quantification of our biosensor. However, for the purposes of this presentation, we'll focus on linear DNA probes. So what are these probes? Essentially, there are two DNA strands, both complementary to a section of the rolling circle product. The first strand is tagged with a black hole quencher 1, also known as the quencher probe, and the second strand is tagged with the FAM DNA dye, also known as the fluorophore probe. When the quencher and fluorophore bind to the product, they're brought in close proximity, allowing the quencher to absorb the energy emitted from the fluorophore, diminishing the signal. This it causes an inverse relationship. As the microRNA concentration increases, the fluorescence is decreased. Before we started our experimentation, we created ordinary differential equations models to simulate the rolling circle amplification reaction. W through the combination of michaelis menten equations, mass action laws, and thermodynamic parameters, we created two models for rolling circle amplification that can predict our fluorescent output from microRNA concentrations. 
Initially, we wanted to simply visualize our product. So we ran the rolling circle amplification on a 1% agarose gel, and it worked. We were able to see a clear, bright band on the gel near the top of the well, indicating that our rolling circle product is greater than 10 kilobases. After we visualized our product, we needed to quantify it. To test the efficiency of our linear probes mechanism, we isolated the middle sequence of the padlock so as to minimize confounding variables from the rolling circle product. We observe a statistically significant decrease in fluorescence. Next, we varied microRNA concentrations with rolling circle amplification and measured the subsequent fluorescence. As you can see in the graph, there is a negative logarithmic correlation between microRNA concentration and the relative fluorescence units, or the RFU. This data shown is parallel to our ODE model, thus validating our results, thus also proving that rolling circle amplification coupled with linear DNA probes is an effective and efficient means of quantifying microRNA. We were able to create this characterization curve in picomolar concentrations. We then shared our goals and results with a cardiologist from the Emory School of Medicine who informed us that in human blood serum, microRNA concentrations are less than one nanomolar. And if we are to test our biosensor in the real world, we would need to do so after testing in clinically relevant ranges. So we obtained human blood serum from a local university and spiked it specifically with microRNA 13P at a two picomolar concentration. We again observed this negative logarithmic correlation parallel paralleling our ODE model, thus validating that not only can rolling circle amplification detect microRNAs, it can do so at a two picomolar concentration, validating that our biosensor can work in clinically relevant ranges. Now, how do we plan to make this technology affordable and accessible, Madhav? Overall, rolling circle amplification was a success. Ideally, we could have started working with padlock probes right away. However, Due to the limited information available on designing padlock probes, it took several iterations over multiple weeks to hand create ours. In fact, the most recent software probe design tool was published in 2005 and doesn't support microRNAs. Evidently, this roadblock was not unique to our team, leading Lambert iGEM to develop our own software tool. Introducing Probe Builder, a tool that allows you to generate padlock probe sequences using a target microRNA sequence to detect and a reporter mechanism. Using computer-aided algorithms, ProBuilder attaches arms to the ends of your desired reporter mechanism, and with the help of BioPython and DNA Tools libraries, ensures that these arms have the same annealing temperature to accurately bind to the target microRNA at the same time. ProBuilder is completely open source and does not require purchase of heavy computing resources to use. All you need is a device with reliable internet access, and you can generate your own padlock probes. We validated the output of our software tool by producing a functional padlock probe sequence to detect microRNA-451. And as we hoped for, we saw a decrease in fluorescence in the presence of this target microRNA. Now you may be wondering, what do I do with the fluorescence I get from these biosensor samples? Well, if I were to show you this tube of fluorescein, would you be able to tell me how much fluorescence is in this tube? No, because with the naked eye, you can't quantify fluorescence you need a special tool called a fluorometer. And luckily, I brought mine. This is MicroQ, a frugal and DIY fluorometer costing under 20 euros to, to, sorry, under 20 euros to build, less than the cost of the average meal in Paris. Commercial fluorometers, <laughs> commercial fluorometers are often not easily accessible or portable, meaning that fluorescent biosensors often are limited to well-funded researchers. But with MicroQ, anyone can quantify fluorescent biosensor samples, giving results from a PCR tube sample within just seconds. Compared to the commercial plate reader in our lab as a benchmark, MicroQ, MicroQ achieved an error of only negative 2.9%, meaning that you don't need to spend over $20,000 on a commercial fluorometer to quantify your biosensor samples. We modeled the relationship between microRNA concentration and fluorophore concentration from a rolling circle amplification reactions, thus proving that you can get a fluorophore concentration from our hardware device and a microRNA concentration from our model. And finally, we measured GFP expression from a testing device in two E. coli strains, BL21 and DH5-alpha. The results show a statistically significant difference in protein expression and also indicate a similar performance between microQ and plate reader, thus validating our measurement device. So now that we've built this tool for measurement, and we've produced a kit for users. 
But Rick, who's this for? First and foremost, our project was always meant to benefit patients. Thus, we conducted voluntary, confidential interviews with those diagnosed with CAT. Next, we spoke to cardiologists from the Metro Atlanta and South Indian area who gave us many important points. Firstly, we realized that at-home tests can cause unnecessary anxiety and or misdiagnosis. Thus, we restructured our project as a tool for doctors. Next, we were told that our kit could provide the necessary early information needed for at-risk patients for them to make the lifestyle changes. Next and finally, many doctors validated our approach, citing the demand for quick, non-invasive tools such as ours. But many cardiologists point out a problem. There's a lack of data for microRNA screening. But why? The answer is that microRNAs as biomarkers is a relatively novel concept, meaning that current quantification methods are either unspecific or too expensive. For this reason, we contacted experts in microRNA biomarkers, such as one from the University of Glasgow, who told us about the current lack of data, as well as the inability to compare certain studies. Next, we spoke to another researcher from the Morehouse School of Medicine, who suggested the use of a control to, in order to avoid false positives and negatives. But finally, we spoke to another researcher from the Emory School of Medicine, who pointed us in the direction of using microRNA 451A as a control. But Conducting this research ourselves, we have firsthand experience on the difficulties of compiling microRNA data without a central database. Thus, we created the design for CADMIR, an online microRNA database for under-resourced researchers so they can gain access to the raw data they need. This way, CADMIR removes a huge barrier so that geographic location and financial resources does not dictate who can or cannot participate. Outside of making microRNA research more accessible, Lambert iGEM also wanted to increase preventative care and communication for historically underserved communities with coronary artery disease. This was done, firstly, through a core word board for nonverbal patients so they can advocate for their own care. This was done through words and associated images with heart illness that can be used alongside a standard word board. Next, looking at our own diverse communities, we recognize the need for heart-healthy recipes that maintain cultural integrity. Thus, we pulled recipes from global and local sources, such as international iGEM teams and our school's local nutrition department. But in order to supplement these delicious dishes in our cookbook, Lambert iGEM created heart-healthy catalog presentations held through both in-person seminars and YouTube videos. We measured our impact by conducting pre- and post-surveys, garnering over 300 responses, proving an increase in disease awareness. But everything I've talked about today is so important. But who will maintain our database? pursue microRNA research, and fight heart disease for years to come. Students. We reached out and tried to spread synthetic biology to a younger audience as Georgia's education curriculum has holes in hands-on lab work in synthetic biology. We did this through two learning approaches. Firstly, scaffolded learning. This is when you spread learning over a longer period of time so students can better absorb the information, and inquiry-based learning that allows students to think critically. We facilitated this through our secondary education initiatives, summer camps, transformation workshops, and teacher workshops. Additionally, we reached out to the Georgia Department of Education and Forsyth County School System to further disseminate our lessons into the hands of teachers in classrooms. All in all, Lambert iGEM's education initiatives increased public awareness about coronary artery disease and ensured the longevity of synthetic biology education. In the future, Lambert iGEM would like to increase the specificity and sensitivity of our biosensor, as well as develop new ones for biomarkers that could be indicative of plaque buildup. Heart disease, such as CAD, are some of the most prevalent yet preventable causes of death in the world. With the tools in their hands, doctors and clinicians have the knowledge at their fingertips in order to treat and monitor this disease, saving millions of lives. Unlock tomorrow with CADLOCK. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.